Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 391 on Now You Know. And thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's episode. This year, we're off to a great start to improve our health. Taking AG1 every day has been life-changing. AG1 is a science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source ingredients that support our brain, gut, and immune system, nutrients that I might be missing in my diet. It's simple and easy to start off my day. Just scoop, shake, and sip in under one minute. And AG1 gives your body what it needs without having to give it too much thought. It combines what you would normally get from multiple individual supplements into a simpler and more effective way to raise your baseline health while supporting daily performance and healthy aging. AG1 sources the best and highest quality ingredients it can find. It has 75 vitamins and minerals and whole food sourced ingredients NSF certified for sport to ensure high quality and safety. And AG1 is gluten-free, dairy-free, and with no sugar added. Try AG1 for yourself. Click the link in the description below or scan the code in the bottom left to get a year's supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free travel packs. So Elon posted on Wednesday, production design complete and unveil end of year aiming to ship next year. I think it has a shot of being the most mind-blowing product demo of all time. What is he talking about? The new next generation Tesla Roadster the one we've been promised for years. He said zero to 60 in under one second. And that is the least interesting part. He said, tonight we radically increase the design goals for the new Tesla Roadster. There will never be another car like this if you could even call it a car. So Tesla owner Silicon Valley asked, can it fly a little? And Elon gave the... Then Farzad said, son of a bitch, you actually are making a rocket on wheels. Laugh my ass off. And Elon says, of course. Ashley Vance says, tonight a room full of engineers crap themselves. And Elon laughed. So remember what Elon said back in 2018. He said the SpaceX option package for the new Tesla Roadster will include about 10 small rocket thrusters arranged seamlessly around the car. These rocket engines dramatically improve acceleration, top speed, braking, and cornering. Maybe they will even allow a Tesla to fly. And he said, 19 years ago when my first company got bought, I had to decide between buying a house in Palo Alto or a McLaren F1, best car ever in my opinion, was no contest. I bought F1 and a small condo that was much cheaper than the car. New Tesla Roadster will exceed all gas sports cars in every way. And then he went on to say last week, you will love the new Roadster more than your house. Alex said zero to 60 miles per hour in less than a second equals 2.88 Gs of acceleration. This amount of longitudinal acceleration for such a short duration is perfectly safe for human physiology. The exhilaration may, however, induce one-time side effects such as involuntary loss of bladder control. All right, so what do you think? Zero to 60 in less than a second. Now, I just want to remind everyone, I was in the Tesla Next Generation Roadster. We went zero to 60 in under two seconds, and I almost lost my <laughs> bladder control. Bladder control. <laughs> Holy Whoa! So, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen um, when the thrusters turn on. Right. So it's definitely thrusters. There's not really any way to get a car to accelerate faster than about 1.75-ish. Yeah. Um, yeah, without tire grip. Yeah. So, I mean, unless they make Velcro tires and Velcro roads, it's it, and then it's even <laughs> then harder. It won't fly. Yeah. So, I think that it does mean thrusters, um, which is very exciting. And so, I mean, we're getting a date now, right? End of 2025. So, can everyone wait another year and a half? Yeah. <laughs> but while Elon was busy announcing what Tesla's next product will do, Unusual Whales said breaking, Apple winding down electric car plans, ending decade-long foray per Bloomberg. Some Apple car employees to be cut, many will shift to AI. And Elon gave the salute smoking emoji? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sawyer Merritt said Apple tried to make an EV for 10 years, has a cash pile of $162 billion, and still ultimately came to the conclusion that it's too hard and that margins would be too small, even at a $100,000 price. Originally, Apple wanted it to be a fully autonomous vehicle, but they didn't have the vehicle fleet, real-world data, nor the experience to be able to accomplish that. There are only two American car makers that haven't ever gone bankrupt, Tesla and Ford. And Elon went on to say that the natural state of a car company is dead. You're dead? Yeah, man. 
So Morgan Stanley analyst Adam Jonas said that according to the Washington Post, Apple had 67 vehicles testing autonomous driving from December of 2022 through November of 2023. They collected data on public roads for 450,000 miles. Now, just for some perspective, during that time, Tesla had over 5 million cars with full self-driving collecting data on about 50 billion miles. Tesla's fleet drives about 100,000 miles per minute. So that means that Tesla's fleet drove more miles in five minutes than Apple's fleet drove in a year. <laughs> okay, so how many Apple employees were working on this Titan top secret EV project? Because I feel like it was just a little side project for Apple. Uh, it was about 2,000 employees. <laughs> 2,000. That's more than like. No, this wasn't like 20 people in a room. This is a campus. And they were all working on Apple's electric car, which I never saw, never really even heard much about. Mm -hmm. And they were working on it for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, so what's going to happen to these 2,000 employees? Uh, Apple says that many will go to work for Apple's new AI program. Okay. So you're going to take vehicle engineers who are good at like axles and nuts and bolts, and you're going to have them work on AI? Well, I mean, my guess is that most of them actually, most of those engineers are going to get laid off. Only the autonomy team engineers will probably transition over to Apple's AI. Wow. So how much did Apple spend on Project Titan? Uh, reportedly, Apple spent $10 billion on this project over the past 10 years. $10 billion mm -hmm. with nothing to show for it. I know, right? I mean, hard to even put it on your resume if you worked on it. So I see here uh, that you worked at Apple. That's great. I love my Apple iPhone. Did you work on that? Uh, no. I also love my Apple Watch. Did you work on that? Uh, no. H how about Apple TV? Some great shows on there. Uh, no. Uh, what did you work on while you were at Apple? Apple Music? Uh, Apple Pay? Uh, no, I worked on Project Titan. Ooh, Project Titan. That sounds cool. What was that? Uh, it was going to be Apple's autonomous driving $100,000 electric vehicle. Ooh. So when is that coming out? Uh, it's not coming out. We worked on it for 10 years and spent $10 billion, but Apple scrapped it and laid me off. Ouch. Okay, so the fry later is over here, and here's your apron. Remember to say in a friendly tone, welcome to Wendy's. Would you like to try our bacon double cheeseburger? So Elon posted Tesla Model Y receives the highest possible safety rating. And of course, Elon is talking about the 2024 IIHS, or Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The IIHS has added even higher bars this year for improved protections for rear seat passengers and pedestrian safety features. So the Model Y getting the highest IIHS safety rating at top safety pick plus is even more impressive of the 71 vehicles that were tested only 22 managed to get the top safety pick plus many other evs like the rivian r1t and the r1s uh, the hyundai ionic 5 the subaru solterra and the nissan aria only got top safety pick not the plus. Yeah, I was happy to see that the IIHS improved their side impact crash test, which now uses a heavier impact weight of 4,200 pounds in its deformable barrier to better emulate an SUV. It's also closer to the ground and shorter, which makes the test more realistic. IIHS also updated their front crash test to focus on rear occupant protection. And IIHS has updated their nighttime front pedestrian crash avoidance criteria. Now, what I don't like about this is twofold. Number one, the naming. Top safety pick. Well, that sounds to me like the best, but it's not. It's actually nowhere near as good as top safety pick plus. Now, this might be fine for streaming services to do Disney plus, ESPN plus, Apple TV plus, but I don't think it should be used when it comes to safety. How about an actual number, IIHS, uh, this car gets a 97 and this car gets an 86. That would be way more useful to me as a consumer. Number two, I don't like how IIHS highlights car companies. The automakers leading the pack this year are Hyundai Motor Group, which includes the brands of Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis, Mazda, and Toyota Motor Corporation. Yeah, why are you calling out these three companies when Tesla has the highest ratings? And let's be clear for the umpteenth time, Tesla has the safest cars on the road, both in terms of if you get into an accident and in keeping you from getting into an accident in the first place. So I just want to take a step back here. This means that the Model Y is not only the safest car on the road, it's also the best selling car on the road. Mm -hmm. So this means... And it could be why it is the best selling that, car that on the road. That could be, yeah. Hey, and if you like what we're doing on the show, please hit the like button. It really helps to share this with other people. And I think YouTube has been suppressing us. 
All right, so Elon sued OpenAI and its co-founder Sam Altman on Friday in California Superior Court for breach of contract from when Elon founded OpenAI as a nonprofit. Of course, now OpenAI is a for-profit valued at more than $80 billion. Shamath Palihapitiya said the discovery will be epic. And Elon said yes. So Elon left OpenAI's board in 2018. OpenAI then opened a commercial division and got about $10 billion in investment from Microsoft. Elon's lawsuit alleges that OpenAI lacked expertise in AI and was ill-prepared to, quote, make an independent determination of whether and when OpenAI has achieved AGI, and hence when it has developed an algorithm that is outside the scope of Microsoft's license. Farzad said prophetic stuff from Elon Musk about Google's AI efforts back in 2016, especially after the Gemini disaster of the last few days. Imagine if X didn't exist to call out how concerning their bias was. Quote is from Elon's lawsuit of OpenAI. And the quote here is, DeepMind, which is Google's AI, is causing me extreme mental stress. If they win, it'll be really bad news with their one mind to rule the world's philosophy. And Elon said, yeah. Benjamin said, there is not one open AI. There are eight. Per Elon's legal filing, open AI is actually a series of LLCs involving these. I knew they had a unique structure, but holy crap, to my non-lawyer eyes, this looks like some bizarre Cayman Islands craziness. Is this normal? Not great PR, at least. And Elon says, shell game, corporate edition. And Harrison says, which one of you is supposed to be open and not for profit? But Vinod Kosla says, with Elon, it feels a bit like sour grapes in suing OpenAI, not getting in early enough, not staying committed and now a rival effort. Like they say, if you can't innovate, litigate. And that's what we have here. Elon of old would be building with us to hit the same. And Jason Calacanis says, not getting in early enough, he was a founder. Elon says, Vinod doesn't know what he is talking about here. And I don't think this lawsuit should be any surprise. Elon has been talking about this for a while. This is him in his own words. Look, it does seem weird that something can be um, a nonprofit uh, open source and somehow transform itself into a for-profit closed source. Um, I mean, this would be like, like, let's say you funded an organization to save the Amazon rainforest, and instead they became a, a lumber company <laughs> and chopped down the forest and sold it for money. And you'd be therefore like, well, wait a second, that's uh, the exact opposite of what I gave the money for. Yeah. Uh, is that legal? That doesn't seem legal. Uh, and if it is, and, and in general, if it is legal to uh, start a company as a non-profit and then take the IP and transfer it to a for-profit that then makes tons of money. Um, shouldn't everyone start? Shouldn't that be the default? And Tesla Economics says this is why Elon is suing OpenAI. And Elon said, yeah. And as famed angel investor Jason Calacanis points out, the IRS is going to be all over this. I'm fascinated by the concept of starting companies as non-profits, getting tax breaks and spinning out for profits. Donate $1 million to a startup nonprofit and get tax breaks, then get equity in a for-profit and sell the shares and start over. Elon says, yeah, this structure is either legal and everyone should do it, or it is illegal and OpenAI is a house of cards. And so, yeah, we'll have to see how this goes. I just, you know, we've been a part of nonprofits before, and the whole point, the whole thing the, all the time, the thing that you have to constantly talk about is, remember, everybody, we're a nonprofit, so we're not trying to make profit. We're trying to do good. Yeah, but there's so many loopholes in nonprofits. A lot of people, you know, get paid very well working for nonprofits. Sure. But the idea behind the company, the, the behind the nonprofit, is that it's supposed to be not for profit. And so, therefore, you're not supposed to be able to, like, put equity in and then be able to make money off of shares and all sorts of stuff like that. You're supposed to be, like, solving a problem for the good of everybody no, I mean, if we didn't have Elon actually putting his money where his mouth is and suing um, and bringing this all to light, Chamath Pali Hapatia is very correct here. In Discovery, we're going to learn a lot of stuff that we didn't know before. Mm. And that may be one of the biggest reasons Elon's doing this. It might just be to get this all out there. So Sora Merritt posted, S&P. For 2023, the Tesla brand scored repeat wins for overall loyalty to make, highest conquest percentage, alternative powertrain loyalty to make, and ethnic market loyalty to make. The popularity of both the Model 3 and Model Y among current owners, along with the brand's ability to attract many ICE customers to the BEV space, contributed to Tesla's multiple awards for the second year in a row. And this is from S&P Global Mobility. So check this out. Ooh, highest conquest percentage. Sounds like a video game metric. Player number one, highest conquest percentage. Yeah, so these stats are from S&P Global Mobility. I especially love how they have to bury the lead with alternative powertrain loyalty to make. They can't just say 
EV. Well, I mean, what about a horse and buggy company? He wouldn't want to leave them out. True. But wait, wait, wait. Overall loyalty to model, which is a new award this year, by the way, was given to the Lincoln Nautilus. I haven't even heard of it. What is it? It's Lincoln's new SUV. Seats five starts at $50,000. It's an ice car with only 24 miles per gallon. But, but I think I know why the 24,000 people or so who bought it are so loyal. It's got this in cabin scent cartridges. What? Yeah, you can breathe in cloud balsam and serene seashore, twilight ember and sunlight retreat. Each cartridge, by the way, costs $30. Maybe they mix in a little Lincoln loyalty into each scent. I like Lincoln the best. <laughs> Must order more Lincoln scent cartridges now. How do you like the Lincoln Nautilus, dear? I love it so much. Turn up the Lincoln scent. Drone footage shows what appears to be mega chargers at Tesla's Mega Pack factory in Lathrop, California. Now, looking at this footage, you may say, well, aren't those just version three superchargers? But judging by the size, which we can get by using the Tesla semi trucks for scale, it does appear that these chargers are larger than version three. These appear to be mega chargers. And this is really good news for at least three reasons. Number one, obviously, Tesla semi truck is cheaper to operate than traditional diesel semis. So a cost savings for Tesla as they transport these mega packs everywhere. Number two, better for all of us because less air pollution. And number three, it helps Tesla with validation. More miles on the road for the semi gives Tesla more data on how to make the semi better. I think it's funny that the mega chargers kind of look like the urban chargers. <laughs> and they're, scaled they're, up. they're kind of two on two opposite ends. One gives you 72 kilowatts. The other one gives you probably a megawatt. So there's been a couple sightings of what appears to be a Model 3 Plaid. Oh, that guy in Spain who saw like two Model 3s and everyone thinks it's a Plaid? Well, I'm pretty much convinced of it. And let me show you why. Okay. So first of all, there's the smile. So you can see here on, this, smile. on this black Model 3, it has a different looking front end from the normal Highland Model 3. Okay. Again, so this is a refresh. A lot of people haven't seen the Highland. And already we're seeing a new version of the Highland here. Yeah, but that could just be like a body kit. Okay, except that I looked and I couldn't find a body kit that looked just like this. Okay. Now, interestingly, the red Model 3 from the same filming didn't have the smile. So maybe it's an option. I don't know. Next, the spoiler. The new Model 3 doesn't have a spoiler. Again, aftermarket. Okay, it could be. But then we have the wheels. Those do not line up with what Tesla offers aftermarket wheels. Again, couldn't find them. But also, it seems to have the same lug nut covers as the premium wheels. Next, the calipers. That's just paint. Okay, but also the plate. Uh, it's not that hard to find one or make one. Okay, how about the crew? I counted at least 10 people. Probably just some rich guy showing off his car hired a film crew. Probably some local fisherman out for a pleasure cruise at night through eel-infested waters. Okay, well, what about that? Whoa, what's that? That is one of those million dollar car filming rigs. Oh. So also, let's look at the location. Okay. This is down in the fancy part of Valencia, Spain. I think that you almost certainly need permission to be there. Whatever, I mean, Tesla could just be filming a marketing video. Well, how about the badge? That's a plaid badge. No, it's not. I know, I know. I could buy one off the internet for five bucks. No, 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 no. That, that's not plaid. Oh, yeah. That's a ludicrous badge, not plaid. Haven't you seen Spaceballs? Prepare ship! First they go ludicrous, then they go plaid. They've gone to plaid! I see. So, it's a ludicrous Model 3? You're the one making the claim here. Well, okay, so... No, I mean, I kind of agree with you in some ways because earlier this year, Model 3 performance was removed from Tesla's website. Then VP of Investor Relations, Martin Vieca, said you should get the performance one once that comes out, implying that there will be a new, like, refreshed performance. So this could be it. And so I'm not disagreeing with you that there'll be a new performance. Right. So, I mean, this must be the refreshed performance Model 3, complete with a more aggressive new look option and a cool new badge. I mean, I wonder if it'll have like ludicrous acceleration package as like an add-on. My brains are going into my feet! Now, there was also what appears to be a Model 3 performance spotted in the U.S. with some camo on it. Clearly a spoiler. Those new wheels. And interesting, it has an EU sticker on it. But look at that Cybertruck above it. What's going on with the back end of that? 
Yeah, it, it's not the traditional bumper. I don't think that that's what's behind the bumper. I could be very wrong, but it kind of looks like it works on the railroad. Yeah, what's going on here? But yeah, I mean, ludicrous Model 3. That's, I mean, that would be really cool. And it would be a good way to get people to differentiate the performance because now performance would have something even more. But then you'd run into trouble with the Model S. Although, have you been seeing how Model S sales are way down? I mean, yeah. I mean, I understand why. Like, why would you spend the extra money on an S when the Model 3 gives you so much? Well, and now everyone's going to be waiting for the Roadster. So, right. you know, if you knew that you couldn't afford the Roadster, but now there's a ludicrous Model 3 and it's going to be in the, I don't know, $60,000 range. I think that it kind of completes Tesla's, uh, you know, spread on what exactly it is that you want. And this is the funny part because a lot of analysts will say like that Tesla doesn't have enough models. But there's so many distinctions within each model, you know, getting a performance means the car is almost a completely different car. Right. And only in the best ways. Like, it's not like they put be way better suspension in it or something. It's, right. it's just more powerful. All right. It's time for the Cybertruck Roundup. Yeehaw! The Cybertruck Roundup. So Elon reposted Tesla's tweet of desert power. Check this out. And he says, the sleeper has awoken. The sleeper? doesn't look like a sleeper, <laughs> No, then that's not a sleeper. Is that like a Dune reference or something? I don't know. It's like the worm has awoken. I don't know. Uh, Tesla has also released Cybertruck service and owner's manual, so get ready for some great bedtime reading. What do you want to read this evening, Timmy? The Cybertruck service manual. We left off on section 31, subsection 3010, front suspension, including hubs, remember? Okay, let's see. We left off on front knuckle hub and bearing, driven hub, six times 139.7 millimeter PCD, 180 millimeter flange, remove and install. Oh yeah, I remember. It was correction code 31010550011, FRT. Yep, so okay, 0 0.30 note, unless otherwise explicitly stated in the procedure, the above correction code and FRT reflect all the work required to perform this procedure, including the linked procedures. Do not stack correction codes unless explicitly told to do so. <laughs> so it seems that somebody wanted to ignore Tesla's flipper clause for the Cybertruck. Yeah, it appears that John Clay Wolf, who runs the online site GiveMeTheVin.com, resold a Tesla Cybertruck in the Mannheim auction to Porsche South Orlando for $244,000. According to the deal that we all have to sign when buying a Cybertruck from Tesla, you are not supposed to resell it within the first year unless you offer it to Tesla first. If you do resell it, Tesla may demand $50,000. We'll have to see if Tesla goes this route or not. My guess is now that Tesla is producing what appears to be 100 or so Cybertrucks per day, I don't think that they'll care as much as they did back in December when only a couple per day were being sold. Yeah, I kind of agree with you there. But we'll see what happens. And uh, this kind of is the test case, right? So if he gets away with it, maybe more and more people are going to resell him. I think the big story here is what he sold it for. Uh, I mean, these are $100,000-ish trucks right now, and he sold it for like two and a half times that. And that shows the level of demand for the Cybertruck right now, at least at the very, very high end. Which, again, I don't expect most of us to be like, oh, darn, I, I wish I knew about that auction. I would have I would have outbid that guy. But it does show that somebody was like, Yes, I will put $245,000 down for my Cybertruck. Tesla Economics says there's no car company in the world that has the level and reach that these celebrities naturally generate from driving the hottest product in the world right now. Tesla doesn't need to advertise because these people do it for them. Check out the list. So we have Kim Kardashian, Jay-Z and Beyonce, Lady Gaga, Pharrell Williams, Jay Leno, Serena Williams, Shy Gilgius Alexander and Justin Bieber. Yeah, he said the Cybertruck halo effect continues to grow and this list will continue to grow, ultimately translating into more sales for Tesla. And Elon said, well, they clearly have great taste. Important to note that no one receives a discount, including me, and no one is paid to promote our products. Although I will say, I bet they cut the line. Because come on now, we were number 20. <laughs> Omar's catalog says Cybertruck is the most comfortable Tesla. And Elon said that's what surprises people most. Yeah, because you don't normally think of pickup trucks as comfortable. And, at least and, the Rivian R1T. And when you look at the <laughs> Cybertruck, it doesn't look like, you know, a comfy armchair. Right, it looks like a military operation. Yes. 
Scott says, what are your thoughts on Porsche buying a Cybertruck at auction this week? And Elon says, did they? I have a lot of respect for Porsche engineering, although they have some ways to go with electric to match their combustion skills. When they take it apart, they will discover a lot of new technology. I think it was a Porsche dealer, so I think they're just going to sell it, but who knows? And no wonder Ford's electric truck margins are negative. Sawyer Merritt posted that Ford just paid $250,000 for a Cybertruck in the aftermarket and is testing it at its proving grounds near Detroit. And okay, so maybe they bought it. <laughs> and Elon says, worth it. And if you want to keep up with what's going on with Cybertrucks, go to the Cybertruck Owners Club. They are our sponsors, and there you're going to find not only everything you want to know in the forums, but also this. The order delivery and reservation tracker. So you yes. can find your place in line. You can see, you know, when other people have ordered their trucks and when and where people are getting their cyber trucks delivered. Where is the key point yes. for us? Yes. Come on, Massachusetts. So remember when we told you that the lawyers who sued Tesla in that class action lawsuit of one shareholder over Elon's $56 billion comp package would soon be seeking millions, if not billions in legal fees? And remember how you thought that just couldn't be because, of course, it's crazy. Well, lawyers who voided Elon Musk's pay as excessive want a $6 billion fee. What? 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 <laughs> and Elon posted, the lawyers who did nothing but damage Tesla want $6 billion. Criminal. It's not $6 billion, though. I was just being hyperbolic. It's really only $5.95 billion. So basically, the judge wants to overturn Tesla's shareholders' votes and instead funnel the money to this legal group from the same shareholders' pockets. And Elon says, it is utterly disgraceful. It is never the shareholder. They are just a puppet. The real parasite is the class action law firm. Farzad said, did Tesla investors just get scammed? And Elon said, yes. So Sora Merritt said, plaintiff lawyers, Elon Musk was overpaid. Also plaintiff lawyers, we'd like to be paid $6 billion in fees. Bill Gurley said, that is quite ironic. And Elon said, so ironic. S.E. Robinson Jr. said, today, three law firms asked if they could steal $6 billion from Tesla shareholders, employees, and Elon Musk. They are Bernstein, Litowitz, Berger, and Grossman, New York, Friedman, Oster, and Tejtel, New York, and Andrews and Springer, Wilmington, Delaware. And Elon says, they are evil. And the most ironic thing is that the law firms want to get paid in, wait for it, Tesla stock. And Mark Andreessen says, absolutely incredible. And Elon says, disgusting. Oh, and you were wondering what the lawyer's hourly pay was, right? Yeah. I figured it out. Okay. It's $288,888 per hour. Cha -ching, cha -ching. Over a quarter million dollars an hour? Mm-hmm. You got into the wrong line of work, my friend. <laughs> Tim Poole says, this is f***ing criminal. As a Tesla shareholder, I am livid. Elon says, those lawyers are reaching new heights of hypocrisy. Fate loves irony, but hates hypocrisy. Yeah, so I don't even know where to go with this. It's not like uh, you can complain to anybody because uh, it's a court. So, I mean, couldn't Tesla shareholders sue the lawyers? <laughs> and then those lawyers, hang on, follow me here. Okay. Then those lawyers could get like a billion dollar payout from the other lawyers. Oh, Tesla's lawyers? To the shareholder lawyers. Shareholder lawyers. New shareholder lawyers. Oh, we're, I see. We're the, we're the new shareholders in this case. So gotcha. we, the Tesla shareholders, sue the lawyers. I got this, the lawyer for this. Yeah, no, I don't I mean, if this were like a, a TV show, you'd be like, well, that's just ridiculous. It is. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's so like, stupid. Like, like when we reported a few weeks ago that the lawyers for the plaintiff could get maybe a billion dollars, I thought even that's incredibly st that's stupid. It won't happen. To ask for six billion, like what the hell is happening here? How can you with the straight face ask for six billion dollars? I just don't understand. Like, don't you have a rate somewhere on your website or that you tell clients like, OK, so our rate is this <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's what we charge. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know anymore. I don't even know what the hell's going on. This I is insane. This just, is insane. I just don't think that they need to pay it. <laughs> they can go um, fuck themselves <laughs> because that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And I don't know who's going to back these lawyers up. Like, because no, really, no, really. You have Elon Musk who fucking took a company from being worth not a hundred billion dollars, then he made it worth a hundred billion dollars. And and these lawyers really want to have the gall to be like, whoa, wait a minute. He shouldn't get paid any money. And then I, I seriously though, like they and then and then and then they want to go, give us six billion dollars. I don't know. What the f I don't know. Can we all just <laughs> 
do something about this? I just don't. The, it's not going to. Look, look. Let's just take a step back here. Let's take. Take a fucking deep breath. Okay. They're going to appeal it. They're going to appeal it. They're going to appeal it. It's going to be appealed because oh. if this works, then I'm sorry. We don't have society anymore. Okay. I'm so that's just how it works. I, I because then any schmuck can go to any company and go, hey, I know. I don't like this. Why and then you? if the judge happens to know the Bidens, <laughs> then you can just fucking steal the money from the company. I know. It's insane. I want to I'm a shareholder in Tesla. I think that I should be allowed to sue these lawyers for theft. <laughs> And mental stress. <laughs> Do we have any lawyers watching? Do we have any lawyers watching? Just, you don't have to weigh in or anything. Just say, I am a lawyer. <laughs> just comment that. I just want to know how many lawyers we have watching this show. Maybe I'll reach out to you and ask you what the hell you think is going on and get your opinion on it because this is ridiculous. Whew. And hey, if you want to send this clip to your friends, the Now You Know Clips channel, we cut it into little bite-sized clips. You don't have to share the whole one hour episode. You can just put that little section where I'm screaming <laughs> and losing my mind. So Ford was the first automotive manufacturer to announce a partnership with Tesla to open their EVs up to NAX and get the ability to supercharge with Tesla's supercharging network. Last Thursday, Ford officially opened up their F-150 Lightnings and their Mach-E's to be chargeable at Tesla Superchargers. On Tesla's website, we now see that video that we reported on them filming uh, recently, a couple weeks ago. Now, she's obviously charging a Ford Mach-E, and if you look closely, it appears that she's using the Tesla app to initiate the charge. I thought Ford wanted their owners to use the Ford Pass app. I think what Tesla negotiated with Ford was that... Um, Ford was like, well, we don't want our <laughs> our customers to have to download a separate app. So with Tesla on it. With with the Tesla logo on it and Tesla advertising littering it. And so they said, well, we want to be able to use the Ford Pass app. I think that you still can, but just like if I wanted to use, say, the Charge Point network, I would I could use the Charge Point app. Um Charging companies don't really care what car you're plugging in with because they're going to do a little handshake. So I think what's going to happen is basically people are going to use the Tesla app because it probably works a little bit better and probably a little bit faster. And so when you're standing there struggling at the Tesla supercharger, I think that either other Ford owners or, or Tesla owners are going to be able to come over and say like, oh, you're using the City Ford Pass app. You should really use the Tesla app because that's going to work better. Yeah, and I mean, Tesla appears to be charging non-Tesla customers a 30% premium per kilowatt hour. But non-Tesla EV owners, like Ford's EV owners, can pay a $13 per month supercharging membership to pay the same price per kilowatt hour as Tesla owners. Now, Jim Farley, Ford CEO, has tested it out himself, and he's proud of what Ford's accomplished. And Jim tweeted, I'm proud Ford is first to offer our customers this access. With Tesla superchargers added to the Ford Blue Oval charging network, which I've never heard of, it more than doubles the fast chargers available to them. Paired with plug and charge, no other apps are needed to start a charge. I love how he said doubles. It doesn't double. Well, it. he says it more than doubles yeah, because it, it's not even close. <laughs> it more than double. It more than quadruples. It more than quintuples. He went on to say, I've tested it myself and it works great. Making something this easy to use takes a lot of hard work behind the scenes. So congrats to the Ford and Tesla teams for making this happen. Nice, nice, Jim. Yeah, I would also like to thank Elon Musk and the Tesla team for their close collaboration and leadership to help change the lives of so many EV customers through improved access to charging. Well, that's nice that he actually gave the correct nod there. Yeah. Ford now says that customers can order their complimentary CCS2 NAX adapters for their EVs. Oh, great. So we can get one for our Ford F-150 Lightning. Great. Let me go online here. Okay, And I'm great. in my Ford uh, account. Uh, I'm going to click on the button here that says to order my charger. Okay, that didn't work. Let me, let me go back, back well, button. Let me try oops. it again. I'm okay. Click on again. Oh. Okay. Are you signed in? Are you logged in? Yeah, I'm logged into my account. Okay. See, there's my account. Uh, okay. I'm going to just try it again. Maybe I just got a little fluke there. Okay. Uh, okay. I just want to let everyone know we're doing this as a gag, but I actually tried it eight times over the past three days. Just want to make sure it wasn't a one-time thing. And each time, that is exactly what we got. Also, I just want to point this out. We're blurring it. But if you look in the URL, 
The VIN oh. number of our truck was oh. displayed each time. <laughs> now, that's a pretty private number that you want to keep private, but it's hmm. publicly displayed in the URL. So, like, if you're on a Wi-Fi network at Starbucks or something, hmm. that anyone can see your, your VIN number. VIN number, and then they could do various yeah. things with it. But, but the main thing here is, okay, so, you know, Ford did send an email and said, you can now order this, right? And I've tried it multiple times as a fairly intelligent person. I brought in another fairly intelligent person. We both tried it for about, what, half an hour the other it's day. super And funky. we can't get it. So Our website is not My good. guess is either uh, they don't have enough of these and this was their way to limit it, hoping we'd forget about it or go away. Or, you know, one of their interns who programmed the stupid website, which, by the way, it never works well. Um <laughs> I don't know. I, th this is just kind of scary because this is the only way I would be able to charge our F-150 at a supercharger. Right. And and this is all the good press. At when everyone's talking about, oh, for good job, Ford. This is what we're encountering. Yep. Right. So, th you know, you might be thinking like, oh, these people with the Ford F-150 Lightnings and the and the Mach-E's, um, they're going to be pulling up to. No, they're going to be. In, they're going to. Oops. Well, that's and, what they're going to get. And here's what I'd like you to do, Jim. Uh, I'd like you to try this for yourself. I'd like you to go into your Ford account and try and order one yourself. And maybe actually use a dummy account because I'm sure they take care of your account. But uh, do it in a friend's account because you'll find the same thing. And it's just freaking frustrating. Yeah. So get this. Royce Young said, wait, what's going on? And this is because Dan O'Dowd just tweeted out this. Once you drive a Tesla Roadster, you won't want to travel by any car any other way. It's fast, beautiful, and nimble. Take the top off, crank up the music, and drive pure joy every day for 13 years. Thanks, Elon Musk. Our Model S is also great. It has been our family car for 11 years. Did he post this like five years ago or something? No, that was posted last week. And Elon was like, question mark? Uh, now, he does go on to say all of his normal awful stuff about FSD. But as you can see from this recent video from What's Inside... Guess who was buying all of those Tesla Roadsters from China? Remember the ones that were in containers? Yeah. And it sat there in the docks for 13 yeah. years? That was Dan O'Dowd. He owns five Tesla Roadsters originals. Also, like he said, he owns uh, a Model S. So, I mean... <sighs> oh, and by it, the way, he has a billion-dollar gold coin collection I didn't called know. the Tyrant Collection. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, is he doing this because he wants to, like... Make it seem like, well, I'm not against Tesla. I'm just against full self-driving. I don't know. I, I just don't understand. It's kind of crazy. That. Yeah. Please comment down below if you can figure this out. This is just wacko world. Right. I, I never would have guessed in a million years if you had said, like, name the top five people you think who bought those five roadsters from China. I would have been like, I can't be Dan O'Dowd. <laughs> All right, so meet John Felder. He's done something pretty incredible. He is the first person to legally bring a Tesla Model Y to Cuba. Not only did he bring it there, his company, Premier Automotive Export, legally sold it to Jessica and William Rodriguez, two Cuban citizens. After 15 years of negotiating with the American and Cuban governments, John Felder was able to get a license to sell the Model Y to a private citizen in Cuba. He said, quote, it's difficult to operate in Cuba, even worse for an American company because of the embargo. For my company to become the first to bring electric vehicles to the island, I had to get both the Cuban government and the U.S. government to say yes. I had to get two adversaries to agree. Not only did John bring the Model Y, he also partnered with Advanced Solar Products of New Jersey, which will be installing 50 EV charging stations in Cuba. And when it comes to exporting electric cars, it's not like John hasn't done this before. He actually got permission from the U.S. government back in January of 2017 to sell this Nissan Leaf to the Havana-based embassy of Guyana. Felder said that the embassy is still using their car and they've not had to stand in a gas line in Cuba for seven years. By the way, most oftentimes when you need to get gas in Cuba, I've read it takes between an hour and two hours of waiting in line. So not having to stand in a gas line means a lot. Uh, now, if you want to learn more, there's a documentary produced by Peter and Pamela McNeil called Driving Towards Change. I've reached out to the filmmakers to find out how we might be able to watch it. I'd love to interview Mr. Felder and learn all about how he did this. All right. I've asked our producer to see if she can find him. We'll have to see if we can schedule an interview. That would be really cool. All right, next up is our friend Ellie with our SpaceX update. We are awaiting the third test flight of Starship, which we think is going to be in March. So take a look behind me. We say we see Booster 10, Ship 28 is also out pretty soon. These two will be married and uh, thrusting their way to space, hopefully to reach orbit. Hey, Zach and Jesse, that was just a funny joke that I made during my recent trip to Starbase. It was a very quick trip. I was hoping to be able to test out my 
Starlink, but that test didn't work. But I'll probably be back there inevitably pretty soon because we think that the third test flight of Starship will be this month in March. And they have to get going if they want to meet their goal of hopefully launching nine times this year. So while I was down there, I saw a couple updates, including the Star Factory, which is expanding. So out with the tents and in with the actual factory to hopefully meet their goal of eventually creating one starship every 72 hours, a very ambitious goal. But of course, a lot hinges on the starship program being successful, including our trip to Mars, including HLS and more satellite deployment of Starlink. Now, of course, I also have to talk about the Lunar Lander Odysseus, the intuitive machines landing that unfortunately tipped over and broke its leg, but it is still considered very successful. In fact, while Odysseus or Odie is asleep right now, there is a chance that he will generate enough power in a few weeks due to solar panels that he will be able to wake up and transmit more data. So the mission isn't completely lost, but it wasn't perfectly executed however still a great success and keep in mind it's NASA's first landing on the moon in over 50 years since the Apollo era. It's also the first private commercially built lunar lander to reach the moon's surface, so that is a huge success. And of course, there's going to be an IM2 mission, so they've learned a lot from this mission. The main thing is turning off a safety switch for the laser that apparently was a big part of the problem that they had during the landing. I also completed my zero G flight. And yes, I puked. So join my channel, Ellie in Space, if you want to see the full video of my experience, including what I went through mentally and physically. It was quite a roller coaster, and I don't think anyone talks about it this candidly on the internet. So head over to my channel if you want to see that video, which is coming out very soon. Thanks, to Zach and Jesse, and I'll see you next week. Thanks, Ellie. Sorry you had such a terrible zero G experience. I'm <laughs> probably not going to try it. <laughs> I'm still going to try it, but I, I know what you mean. Like people think like, oh, being in zero gravity, no big deal. I wish like, you could practice first, you know, get used to it and then go well, up. I mean, that is, I know that's, that's the, the practice. practice. Well, you can jump. Right. And for I mean, about, and for about, you know, half a second, you're in free fall. I mean, it is called the vomit comet. So, yeah. and Elon Musk tweeted out Starlink now available in Mongolia. That's a big region to add Starlink to. That's cool. All right, it's time for Into the Future, sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving. If you'd like to get this unique razor, which has been billet machined out of aluminum, you can. And you can get 100 free blades if you use our code now you know at checkout. You can also get it in titanium. Ooh. Escape into the future. All right, it's time for Into the Future. And guess what's moving into the future, Jesse? What? The delivery date for Aston Martin's first EV, the Valhalla. <laughs> Hang on. Why is a British car company naming something the Valhalla? I know Volvo is owned by China now, but I feel like it would have been a better fit. I think it has more to do with Marvel movies than history, Jess. Okay. So the Valhalla was delayed by how much? Well, it was supposed to come out next year, and now it's slated to come out sometime in 2026. Oh, well, that's just great! <laughs> so, I mean, what the heck happened? I mean, are they running into powertrain problems? Uh, no, they paid Lucid in order to use their powertrain. So what's the holdup? Well, Aston Martin Executive Chairman Lawrence Stroll said the consumer demand for BEVs, certainly at an Aston Martin price point, is not what we thought it was going to be two years ago. Okay, so to translate... Tesla will completely eat our lunch because who would pay for a Lucid powertrain on an Aston Martin if you could just buy a Model S Plaid? Exactly. And I mean, that was a kind of funny Into the Future story, but are you ready for a real Into the Future story? How okay. about an electric autonomous landscaping robot? Is that futuristic enough for you? Okay. Meet Verdi from Electric Sheep Robotics or ESR. Is that a Philip K. Dick reference? Do androids dream of electric sheep? Yep. That's the story that influenced uh, Blade Runner. Okay, so tell me about Verdi. Okay, so Verdi uses AI developed by ESR to, well, let me have ESR tell us. To accomplish these tasks, ES1 needs to understand the semantics of the world, create a map that can be used for coverage planning, and highlight the edges of the workable area, in this case, trimming, edging, or mowing grass. ES1 achieves this through dense prediction of a world state with a single model. This is akin to chat GPT for language, but for spatial AI. Now, watching that video there, what does 10 hertz mean? 10 times every second. Oh, I see. So it's updating itself. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So Verdi supposedly doesn't need to train. It supposedly just works out of the box. Like it doesn't need to do like 
walk around your property or anything. It just looks like we do and figures it out. ESR is currently operating 40 of their mowers around the U.S. and plans to start selling Verde to commercial and residential customers in Q2 of this year. It might be a little confusing here because they've got two products, right? Verde is the one with the leaf blower and the trimmer. The mower is what is just that autonomous mower. So yeah, we've reached out to the company. I want to find out more and uh, see if we can get our hands on one of these, see if it works. I like the eyes on it. It's kind of like... um. It's kind of like the uh, from Wally, the Bernie. It was a Disney short. <laughs> All right, it's time for Going Green, sponsored by our friends at Climatize. Did you know that lots of solar projects don't happen because developers can't find funding? Yeah, I mean, we all know about solar. But many banks and commercial lenders are still in the dark about how awesome solar is. And that's why we love Climatize. Climatize lets us, the little guy, become our own bank, so to speak, and invest in projects and make the kind of returns that only the big banks can get. Yeah, with Climatize, you can earn up to 10% annually while funding local solar projects. Like, look at these family farms that you can help to go solar while making 10% annual returns. That's amazing. We interviewed Will a few weeks ago. You can check out that video over on Disruptive Investing. We dive into all the details of how he got started and how Climatize works. You can get started with as little as $10. And best of all, there are zero investor fees. If you're interested in learning more, click on the link below or go to climatize.earth slash NYK to get started today. If you use our referral code NYK023, you'll get a free $10 towards your first investment. That is free money, folks. Now, we're obviously not financial advisors. Please consult with a financial advisor before making any financial decisions. Thank you to Climatize for helping to sponsor today's show. Jesse, I don't think we've been fair to Honda up until this point. We've really kind of picked on them because they only have one EV, right? The Prologue. Well, at least in the U.S. But yeah, I'm so what? They've actually got another EV. Check this out. The electric Uni 1. Is this a what? What? Is, is this a wheelchair? Uh, so, okay, this is nice. So this is like for disabled people. It's for people who can't walk around. Um, well, I don't, I think this is more, as you can see from the video here, you know, you put on the VR goggles. It's more for fun. It's a, it's a, you need a big wide open space. Um, I don't think it would, it, I think it would bump into people if you. So, okay. Wait, 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 so, so wait, wait, you, you, you get, you sit on the thing. Uh-huh. And then you put on VR goggles. And then it goes up. And then you go, wee. wee! At a very slow speed, and um, and you're supposed to feel the speed. I don't look this, and is... then also I just I've I've been playing some VR games lately, and uh, these look like shit. these look these do not look good. Uh, look, this is so Honda. I mean, I remember as a kid, Honda put out you know the videos with their little robot, mm -hmm. and I thought this is great. That means within a year or two we'll have robot butlers, and we did not. Uh, Honda's worked on many things like this where, you know, hydrogen cars and robots and stuff that seem really cool and then they never go anywhere. I feel like... They've been working on this, by the way, for 10 years. <laughs> right. I feel like Honda has this thing where they're like, if we can just trick people into thinking that we live in some kind of tech utopia, then people will think that any, any of our stuff is going to be infused with magical right. future technology and uh, they're just lucky to be getting their hands on it. Right. I mean, stuff with engines in it. So like their generators and their ice cars. Yeah. <laughs> Honda, wake up. I mean, come on. Don't you want to try it? And you go, wee! I do until I bump into something, which I'm sure I would. All right, it's time for video contributor stories. And we need you to make this segment of the show special. Remember to send your stories in to us two minutes or less. Shoot them in landscape. Good audio. No music. Send them to hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. Hey, Zach and Jesse. It's Tony from California. And today I'm in West Yellowstone where there is a light amount of snow. I'm on day six of a 10 day road trip and my wife and I have been car camping here in our Model Y uh, for the past few days. A couple days ago on Saturday, it got down to negative five degrees at night, so it was really cold. Our energy consumption in camp mode there was about 2.2% per hour, which is pretty high. Uh, the last few nights has been down to like 15 to 18. It's leveled off closer to our normal, which is one and a half, 1.6 or so percent. But I'll show you a few things around our campsite. Um, you know, you have a standard mattress on the inside, inflatable mattress that we're sleeping in. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. We do have this tailgate tent, uh, which is pretty cool, although we've modified it. And I can bring you guys in and you can see. The big advantage to having one of these when you're car camping is you have a space where you can 
basically set up your cooking and a changing room and to bring you in here this is where the tent normally connects to the car but one cool feature that i think uh, is neat about this tent is that if you don't necessarily want to have that portal because when it's really cold outside like it gets to below freezing uh, i personally don't think it makes sense to try and use the car to heat the entire tent so it's better to just close your car sleep in it and um, this place where the car connects to the tent actually comes off with a zipper. So we just remove that with a zipper and this functions as an awning, a place to change. And to help us carry along this gear, we used this swing away hitch with a cargo mat. And we found that this is the best way to carry along some extra cargo without having a major hit to your efficiency. Uh, on our drive up here, it was about 800 or 900 or so miles to get up here to Yellowstone. And granted, we were driving through snow, rain, uh, below freezing temperatures, and also a 6,000, 7,000 foot or so elevation gain. And my efficiency was only about 20% uh, lower than what I normally experience. Normally, I experience 279 watt hours per mile, and our average on this trip has been about 310 so far. And I'm sure that'll go down as we return. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys found this interesting. And this might inspire more of you guys to go on more uh, electric car camping road trips and also show that you can car camp in the cold, in the snow, even when it's below zero outside. Now you know. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. I feel like we've had warmer temperatures in Massachusetts this winter than you guys have had. <laughs> Crazy. I love, that's a really cool idea. I love the swing out mm. uh, cargo hauler. I, I haven't seen much of that. Um, I haven't seen too much you know, hitch stuff on a lot of Teslas that I see, mainly because people are just commuting to work. But right. I think that that's a really neat idea. I love the tent. Um, and what what's also cool is you could hook that tent up so that way the heat from the car is heating the tent. So if it wasn't right. so, cold. so cold, you could have a very comfortable giant space to, to camp in that's air conditioned. Yeah, and I mean, you could just drive down the road to a supercharger and charge back up again. Yeah, yeah. that's really neat. Thank you, Tony. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. And this week, we got all kinds of cool stories. Um, and over on our Disruptive Investing, we have a story there for about Fisker. So yeah, come join us on Patreon for as little as a buck a month. You're going to get so much great content there. And there's so many other cool perks. We'll see you there. All right, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. It's time for the shout outs. These are the people that help support the work we do. They get their names in the end credits at the end of the show. Who do we got this week, Jess? We got Davey, Chris Hansen, John Lynch, Chris Zen, and Dutch Mazda. Thank you so much for supporting us. We can't do this work without your help. And there was a poll this week uh, asking, do you think that this is the new Tesla Ludicrous Model 3 like Jesse thinks it is? And two thirds of the people agree with Ooh. you. So I guess you're onto something. Yeah. I just hope they get the badge placed correctly from now on. That that little sticker looked a little off to me. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to put a rectangle on something that isn't as rectangular. Maybe they should do something different. Like a different shape. Yeah. Yeah. All right, it's time for Elon's X's of the week. And Elon said, legacy media are such clowns. Zero Hedge says, media blackout over illegal immigrant who murdered that Georgia student. And Western Lensman said, the media told me, Lincoln Riley died to the perils of solo female athletes jogging alone. No mention of someone in the country illegally. Elon said the main way legacy media lies is by controlling the narrative. The AP is one big psyop. George Hot says every year the big platforms have been getting worse and the alternatives have been getting better. Those lines cross eventually. This is the decade the big tech ends. And Elon said, yeah. But isn't Elon big tech? <laughs> no, he's the scrappy underdog. <laughs> I.O. says millennials are defying the generational pattern of becoming more conservative as they age. In fact, the opposite is true. They're becoming more liberal in both the U.S. and U.K. The data is clear that millennials are not going to age into conservatism. Elon says kids are getting Soviet level indoctrination in schools and colleges. So I think that's his explanation. Elon says this post was made from a normal mobile phone straight to a SpaceX satellite with no special equipment in between. And Dr. Know-It-All said, mind blown. If people knew how insanely complex this is to do, this would be top headline news today. Congrats to the SpaceX team. That's one hell of an accomplishment. Elon said, yeah, it's crazy that this works at all. And yet, did not see that on the mainstream no, media. you don't hear about that one, huh? Visegrad24 says, breaking, the Houthis have damaged four underwater communication cables in the Bab el-Mandeb Strait. 
Sean McGuire said it's hard to explain how important Starlink will be as a complement to terrestrial fiber networks. Diversification is how you maintain robustness amidst chaos. Elon said, yeah, they will have a much harder time shooting down satellites. Don't give many ideas, <laughs> Elon. Ashley St. Clair says, just when you think it can't get any crazier, the brother of the illegal immigrant who murdered Lake and Riley, Diego Ibarra, also entered the country illegally. Elon says Democrats won't deport because every illegal is a highly likely vote at some point. That simple incentive explains what seems to be insane behavior. It has become so brazen that a gang of illegals can now beat up police officers on camera in Times Square, get out of jail for free, and still not get deported. Instead, a partly federally funded NGO bought them free tickets to California. Bill Malugan says breaking a stunning turnaround from New York City Mayor Eric Adams, who is now calling for New York City's sanctuary city law to be changed so that some illegal immigrants who commit felonies can be turned over to ICE for deportation. And Elon says, finally. Ross says, assume you have everything. Now what do you want? Elon says, life and the universe. That's a Douglas Adams it's, uh, yeah. title. Ashley St. Clair says, the left will say the story is being used to paint all migrants as criminals. While there are good people who want a better life coming here, a majority of the border crossers are unvetted military-aged men. They're quite literally burying and burning their IDs before crossing. Why? Elon said, anyone, even a literal serial killer, can toss away the ID used to get them into Mexico from anywhere else in the world, then claim asylum, say they have no documentation before being ushered into America. This is happening every day. He went on to say, the ability to discard your identification documents from any country, walk across the southern border and claim asylum has turned America into a refuge for the world's worst criminals. And Elon says many days have passed since the debut of Google's insanely racist and sexist Gemini product debuted, and yet not one person has been fired. Not one. Bill Malugan says, new Senator LaFonza Butler of California is asking the Biden administration for more FEMA taxpayer money to provide more shelter beds in San Diego after the county migrant shelter there ran out of funding. She says 800 to 1,000 migrants per day will be mass released there without intervention. Elon says, dams are bursting all over the country. America is only 4% of Earth's population. If only 1% of the rest of Earth moves here, that would crush all essential services. I am ringing the alarm bell because the flood of illegals is crushing the country. Daily Stoic tweeted out, all cruelty springs from weakness. And, Quote from Seneca. And Elon said, true. Doge designer says, 18 years back. And Elon said, wow, 18 years. Sawyer so Merritt said, in the U.S., the Tesla Model 3 was the most searched car model in the last six months. It had more than 3.8 million searches between August of 23 and January of 24. Holmar's catalog says, exactly, to Barron's headline of Tesla's Roadster is a waste of Elon Musk's time and money and not what the stock needs. He went on to say Elon Musk only has time for Cybertruck, Model S, Model 3, Model X, Model Y, Full Self-Driving, Optimus, Megapack, Falcon 9, Starship, Starlink, Neuralink, The Boring Loop, X, Tweeting About the Border, and Diablo 4. Making fast cars is not what Tesla is about. Elon reposted X's news of audio and video calling are now available to everyone in X. Who are you calling first? Fox News says breaking Illinois judge removes Trump from state ballot citing insurrection ban. Vivek says this is the stuff of third world banana republics, not the United States of America. If removing the front runner from the ballot isn't rigging an election, I don't know what it is. And Elon says this will backfire. He went on to say, inspired by the Penguin movie, you will soon have the option of tapping Grok analysis in post details. It will analyze and explain the whole thread discussion for you. That'll be helpful because some of these you have to go way back to understand what they're talking about. Penny 2X says today is absolutely the last leap day before AGI. And Elon said, you're probably right. Ooh, within four years, the singularity. Biden-Harris HQ says, reporter, Trump pressured Republicans to kill the bipartisan border deal because he didn't want Biden to have a win. The deal would have included some of the toughest reforms in decades. Elon said people who get their news from legacy TV live in a fake alternate reality. Those so-called, quote, toughest reforms would have made invasion-level migration permanent. That diabolical border bill deserved to die and shame on those who supported it. Doge Designer says when Elon Musk was 12 years old, he created a space-themed game, Blast Star, which he later sold to a computer magazine for $500. The source code was published on page 69 of the magazine. Elon says, as the prophecy foretold. Elon said in the coming weeks, Grok will summarize these mammoth laws before they're passed by Congress so you know what their real purpose is. That's going to be powerful. That's going to be very powerful. That's probably one of the most underrated pieces of news that we're telling you about this week. Brett Adcock says, if not obvious yet, figures humanoid robot is the ultimate deployment vector for AGI. And Elon says, Optimus. Brett went on to say, excited to share, figure raised $675 million at a $2.6 billion valuation. OpenAI and figure signed a collaboration agreement to develop next generation AI models for robots. And Elon said, bring it on. Evelyn says, this is my brother, 
If you'd like to help me forward functional hand finger prosthetics, you can help via a GoFundMe. Um, that's because he got an injury. And Elon said, I will help out. Tesla owner Silicon Valley says, beware of what you read about Elon Musk. He's being attacked at an insane rate, and most articles are clickbait. Elon says, the legacy media lies as easy as breathing. Reuters is the worst right now. Kanoka the Great says, reporter, why are you waiting to take executive action on the border? Biden, because we need more forces on the border. I don't have the authority to do that. Elon said the massive flood of illegal immigration is due to 94 executive actions by the Biden administration. Until those executive actions are revoked, claims by Biden that he wants to address illegal immigration are a bold faced lie. Danielle says, well, it finally happened. My phone died and I got locked out of my Tesla. Thankfully, the massage place let me use their phone and hubby unlocked it from his phone. Not sure why the car can't be unlocked using an Apple Watch or other smartwatch. Any chance this could be incorporated, Elon? Elon said, sure. K10 says, confession, I've never made a Build-A-Bear. Elon said, I have. Shibatoshi Nakamoto says, it's kind of weird that most of our politicians will be dead in like 20 years. Elon says, only to be ruled by the new generation of octogenarians. And Elon posted three things America needs. Secure borders, safe cities, sensible spending. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. Community Mail Time. Remember, you can share your stories, photos, and videos with us at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. What do we got, Jess? Jeff spotted this NYPD Ford Mach-E in Manhattan, New York. David got to see the Cybertruck and Highland Model 3 on display at, at the Tigard, Oregon showroom. Ishay spotted this Toyota BZ4X being used as a taxi in Vancouver, British Columbia. Mark saw this all-electric IKEA delivery truck in Montreal, Quebec. Q spotted this Model Y in Lima, Peru. Richard saw this all-electric bus in San Paulo, Brazil. Joel spotted this Fisker Ocean charging an Electrify America station in Wagon Mound, New Mexico. Melody found this wrapped Model Y in San Diego, California. Mr. Truth just recently took delivery of his Cybertruck and he sent us pictures of it parked outside at Giga Texas. Oh. And hey, if you want to go for a road trip, just we I we I'll I'll clear up my, my bedroom. Don't get too close to Giga Texas because I feel like if you forget where you parked, you'll never find it again. Yeah, and they'll just sell it to somebody else. <laughs> Hans and Nas spotted this EV van driving around Sydney, Australia. David found this FUD for sale in Costa Rica. <laughs> there it is. Denard spotted this Walmart Ford e-transit van in Sterling, Virginia. Brian saw this red Cybertruck oh. in Pasadena, California. Oh, I like that. Mm. And Wolf sent us this picture of an Elon Musk-themed carnival parade in central Switzerland. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. <laughs> All right, it's time for our supercharger reviews. Let's see what people have found out there in the world of superchargers. Hey, Zach and Jesse. This is Scott reporting in from the new version three Tesla supercharger installation in Ellsworth, Maine on US Route 1, about 15 miles north of Acadia National Park. There are eight version three chargers in the rear parking lot of a Hannaford grocery store. Lots of fast food and sit down restaurants in the area. As I said, this is the gateway to Acadia National Park. So I expect this to be a very popular supercharger installation. Although it's just my Model Y and another Model X charging at the moment. I rate this one a seven out of 10. Now you know. Hey, Zach, hey, Jesse. Justin, I'm here in Hilton Head, South Carolina, at north side of the island. I'm here at a V2 charger. Uh, there are eight stalls here. Uh, it's pretty new, so there's not too many people here right now. And actually, it looks like the uh, mapping pin is a little bit off, so you may have to uh, find it off of Matthews Drive. It's actually here at a uh, gas station and I'll go ahead and put the address up on the screen here for everyone to find it a little easier but if you're going by Tesla GPS it's a little difficult to find uh, it doesn't look like maps is updated correctly so I would give this probably a 6 out of 10 as it is at a gas station and a convenience store so you can get something to eat or drink but that's about it thanks now you know Hi, Zach and Jesse. It's Eric reporting for the 8th install 250 kilowatt Cape Girardeau, Missouri supercharger. Conveniently located next to a Winks convenience store. Lots of good food and drinks and clean bathrooms. There is a Phillips 66 gas station. You can clean your windshields, which is nice. Not much else around. There is an Elks Lounge or an Elks Club, and there's also a sports club as well in the distance. 
It is conveniently located by the highway. The convenience store is only open till 9 p.m., opens at 6 a.m. So I would give this a four out of 10. Thanks for tuning in, and now you know. Hi, Zach and Jesse. I'm in Harrisburg, Oregon at a Tesla Supercharger. This is a new install, and at first I wasn't going to rank it very high. It doesn't have very many stalls, but then I saw it is a converted gas station. It is no longer a gas station. Instead, they have a nice food truck, and they have a wine taster for your passengers only, of course. So I'm going to give this 7 out of 10. It's got nice clean bathrooms, and the code is 1979, which don't tell anybody. Now you know. Bye. Wow, I love the converted gas station. I also love all the tips. Like, uh, mm. we get the codes, we mm. get the hours, we get, I mean, that's why you need to watch these supercharged reviews. You get the inside scoop. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Um, Thank you, guys. I also want to mention last week, we had a supercharger review of where a supercharger should be located. Yes. And with the encouragement to go vote on uh, where superchargers should be placed. Yeah, exactly. Remember, every quarter you can vote on where you want them, and Tesla listens. So do it. And if you want to send those in to us, don't use the map on our website, which you can use to go review superchargers, by the way. Send those into hello at now you know channel.com. And I think we should, you know, try and put at least one in a week if we have some. Definitely. And if you're wondering where those reviews are located, it's on our website, now you know channel.com. And there's an easy to use map where you can upload your own charger reviews. So please go do that we love them all right what do we got for new superchargers in the world jess we have number 195 in germany is the eight stall in ludwig schaffen ogersheim germany we got number 181 in france the 12 stall in saint chamon france number 84 in australia is the nine stall in north lakes queensland number 75 in hong kong is the three stall at shekle shopping center number three in hawaii is the 12 stall in honolulu at kahala av hawaii wow i think that's the biggest by far we got the 12 stall in Mission, British Columbia. Number 156 in Texas is the 20 stall in Nash, Texas. Number 86 in Sweden is the 20 stall in Grana, Sweden. Number 434 in California is the 16 stall in Auburn at Lincoln Way, California. Number 69 in North Carolina is the 16 stall in Lumberton. Number 214 in Canada is the 8 stall in San Marie, Quebec. Number 34 in Switzerland is the 8 stall in Arbedo Castion, Switzerland. And number 43 in Nevada, number 2,185 in the United States and 6,142 in the world is the 24 stall in Las Vegas at South Maryland Parkway, Nevada. Nice. And hey, thank you to everyone who helps support our YouTube channel. You see all of their names uh, scrolling by here. These are the people who support us for $5 or more a so month. So important. You can help support our channel for as little as a buck a month. You can head over to patreon.com slash now you know. And by the way, over on our Now Let's Review channel, we're going to be giving away a bunch of EV wall chargers that we just reviewed. Yeah, you can only get those by being a Patreon. And I know a lot of you, I mean, this is the kind of interesting stat, Jesse. So many people have been watching the show for years and mm. still don't know what the heck we're talking about about when we talk about Patreon. So Patreon is a website where we get to uh, basically incentivize you amazing folks to help support us. So all you have to do is support us for as little as a buck a month. You get to choose your perk level. Then we give you a whole bunch of different perks to choose from. Um, and, you know, depending on how much you support, you can join us over. I mean, everybody who supports for at least a buck gets uh, Patreon bonus stories every week. You also get a chance to win these EV chargers. But we also have physical perks perks you can get mugs you can get t-shirts and also we have so many other levels so we urge you to go check it out even if you're just going to do it for a buck a month um but there's so much more stuff like our patreon bonus stories this week where you get half a dozen stories that weren't in the main show and i think that it also could make a really good gift so if you've been watching this show with somebody who's a big fan of this show have or, them leave the or room. you're sitting somewhere else <laughs> and you're sick and tired of having to listen to a full one hour long episode this is a really good little gift that you can give to somebody is basically a login to our patreon get some perks you know a mug um or just access to the patreon bonus stories or every, the polls every month right so like for a year's worth of patreon bonus stories that's 12 dollars. i know Pretty good deal in terms of a gift because you're going to be giving them uh, basically 52 episodes for 12 bucks. It's a pretty good deal for yourself as well. So, you know, just be thinking about that. But thank you so much to everybody who supports us. Thank you for watching. Please make sure that you hit the like button. It helps us out. Oh, and if you've been watching the past couple weeks, hit the unsubscribe button and then hit the subscribe button again. It's YouTube has this weird thing where if you've been subscribed for too long, they think that you don't really care anymore. So 
uh, YouTube assumes that everybody is 12 years old and they think that, you know, you have been watching uh, apparently like, you know, baby content and now you've grown up into right. a teenager or whatever and that you're, you know, you're more sophisticated than that. I think that if you've been watching for a while, you are probably an adult and you haven't grown out of us. So if, if that's the case, hit the unsubscribe and resubscribe button. And when you do, you can choose to hit the bell notification icon and that'll allow you to adjust, you know, whether or not you're going to get notifications for when we post things on this channel. And you can have it give you a notification every time we post something or just, you know, whenever YouTube decides. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Now, now you know. know.